Hey gamers, welcome to today's video. I don't know why I started it that way, but I did. We are here once again doing our race playlist. Now, if you guys want to see, I guess, the first half of this playlist, it does count as its own episode, but if you want to see the last one, uh, make sure you go check out episode number 94. Uh, so here we are today with episode number 95. Now, I've uh, done some racing with the wheel here that I bought. Um, and yeah, the racing wheel did not go well, but... We're out here, so if you want to see me absolutely get demolished in a race playlist, make sure you go, of course, check out the last one. Uh, of course, we're just continuing to promote the hashtag playlist at home uh, here on the channel. Of course, with Lamizzle here with us. What's good, Lamizzle? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so in the last episode, we had some spicy discussions about my reasoning for not... why I'm not being returned to... Uh, working at the vault and uh today we're gonna go into some more i guess vault stories from what, uh, what we gotta say about that so yikes holy shit that was a nice ass turn on my part <clears throat> so the first uh vault story that i want to bring up uh, it's kind of a continuation of the last episode what we're yeah, we were talking about in the last episode. Um, we had finished off by saying that Zach had, uh, you know, framed you and basically didn't bring you back because you didn't pre-portion cups or, or weigh things right. Yeah, if you guys want to see all the reasons inevitably, why back, uh, we went through the whole email of what he sent me. Uh, of course, in an email, not in like a doing it the proper way, giving me a call or something. No, just an email. If you want to know what he wrote in that email, uh, my reasons for not returning, make sure you check out the last video. Of course, also, while you're here, make sure you playlist at home. Of course, we're on episode number 95. There are 94 other episodes that you can watch while you're at home quarantining, staying safe um, during these wild times. So. So, yes. Um, we had ended off the last episode by kind of talking about the cost and um, you not using the scale right, which was kind of a thing we both did more me. However, <clears throat> um, there was a story about uh, Zach that we had told in the last episode, um, that you had told in the last episode about not uh, measuring with... Um, or not using the scales for milk and yogurt. Yeah. So, um, obviously that is understandable. If, if you don't get the proportions right, I don't think you should be doing that. But we did get the proportions right almost every single time. That's we've been thing. working with for a while. Um, if you're and, not doing you know, it right, then it's obviously the problem. But if you're doing it correctly, yeah. there's not an issue with you not using the scale, not like... Like, you still look at the recipe, I mean, I'm not, like, looking, just ignoring it, being like, oh shit, it says fucking 14, I mean, if I could just put 3 in it, like, I'm still looking at the recipe, kind of knowing, like, okay, this is a 24 ounce, I'm gonna use, you know, 10 ounces of milk, or the fuck. Like, that's not what I did, I didn't, like, ignore the recipe, and it's not fucking fortunate, like, I still knew, okay, this is about 10 ounces, like, I can fucking do that shit, I'm not a fucking idiot. All right, so we had uh, we'd actually talked about, or, or Jack had brought this back up um, during while we were on the quarantine. Um, oh and we yeah, had to say it was pretty shocking. So he had it was like the day uh, after our last day, yeah, because we were. Open, I believe so. We were open two more days after our last day of work. We last worked on the twenty second. He shut down on the twenty. Yes, so uh, Zach had basically. I forgot what I was going to say now. <laughs> he sent you a text. Oh, we were talking about. About measuring the fucking shit. Because he took it all out of the fucking container and measured it and said you're fucking wrong. Ah, uh, yes. So uh, we have pre portion cups. Um that we make so that it's easier for um, us to just put the smoothie 
ingredients, the fruit in the blender, and then add the milk, yogurt, or whatever else yeah. is needed um, from there. So we don't have to grab out individual, you know, uh, see-through containers that I'm the only one who fucking fills up the pre-portion cups anyway, so it doesn't really matter if you can see through them or not. But, that being said, um, he decided on one of the days it was slow, instead of um, coming up with a plan on what he's going to do to shut, because at this point it was, this is the last day he was open, you had said? It was like the last day or the day before. Most things in the state, because you got to think this is about March 23rd, 24th. So other parts of the country had already shut down. We already seen New York had shut down like a couple days before. California had been shut for about a week or two. So the whole country was getting towards the process of shutting down. Most businesses were shutting now. Theoretically, this place is considered an essential business. Do we view it as essential? Well, at least the meme and I do not. Uh, I don't think that smoothies are something that's essential to your life. Um, maybe a place like Dunkin' Donuts I could see being essential as a do their food, which is more important, but I don't think getting a smoothie and, like, the only food we have is, like, shitty fucking muffins. So, not really, to us at least, essential, so we were sort of leaning towards, hey, you should shut down. So, before that, instead of doing that, he decided to take and measure out the amount of strawberries, blueberries, in the cup that you had made. Yo, I hate my sister so much. Uh, yeah. So he decided to take all of this out and um, measure it out to see if it was right. Now, there's one thing that was wrong with his uh, message. So the one thing that was wrong is he had texted us that he had done it with the dark inspiration. Uh, he took the strawberries out, the blueberries out, like we said, and it didn't match up to what it was. Now, the only difference is that we have sliced strawberries and we have whole strawberries. Now, sliced strawberries and whole berries, if you didn't know, way different. Yeah, if you so, have a strawberry or a whole strawberry, they will weigh different, have different proportions in your cup. So, bad guys. Crazy. theoretically, Using the math that we used, th using the correct math that we used for the coffee, uh, that was actually not used. Half, since the strawberries are sliced in half, you would put twice as much of the sliced strawberries in as the whole berries. Because these portions were made with whole strawberries, I believe. So no, no, it's the other if, way around. Because we got it was started with the sliced ones in those shitty bags, remember? And then he went to whole berries in the fucking box. So it's the other way yeah, around. Yeah, we have... We had, no, nah, yeah, but we had, like, um, extra bags of... We had both of them at the same time. Either way. Oh, we have two different that. strawberries. So whatever the recipe was made with it is the opposite of that. Yes. So, I do know for a fact that I had made a Dark Inspiration with both sliced strawberries, or pre portion cups, with both stra sliced strawberries and whole strawberries. Alright. Three... Two, one, go. So, um, with that in mind, <clears throat> um, I just by instinct know that there are six or seven strawberries, whole strawberries, that go into the Dark Inspiration. So, I put six or seven whole strawberries in, and usually that goes up to a certain level in the cup that I just know by muscle memory. <laughs> Um, or I would take the sliced strawberries and put twice as much or just a little bit higher than where that would be. Uh, and it would always come out to be just around the same weight every time because um, all strawberries are just about the same size uh, that, we, that we use. And um, if you put the same amount of strawberries in every time, like I said, I put six or seven in every time, it should weigh about the same. Uh, now, this dude uh, complained about us just putting in, or not putting in enough, and not making enough smoothie. So to just overshoot anyway, um, so that it made the correct proportion of smoothie. Because you definitely want to make more than making less, because if you make two less, you can't just like give a customer a fucking cup half full. And be like, yeah, sorry, dude. 
So you make more, okay, you put it in a cup for this dude. Kids want to be like. Yeah. But like, you know, okay, if you make a little bit extra, it's better because either somebody there is going to drink it or we just happen to get rid of it. Or you get lucky and somebody wants to order the same smoothie right after and you can kind of just like make that part of it. There's multiple different ways you can get around making extra. But like, that's the whole thing. And he like, a day before we were shutting down, he had to figure out all this shit for, you know, what he was doing for his employees working there, how he was going to potentially stay open if he wanted to. No, he just decided, I'm going to weigh this fucking cup today, dude. Yeah, he, he had no plans at all to, uh... He was so hurt when we asked To close, him. He, he probably just, like, the way Zach thinks, um, is at night. So... Dude doesn't fucking sleep, apparently. No, I mean, he like, he's told me before that he, like, talks to his wife when they're about to go to bed, and that's how, like, you know, they talk about shit. So my, uh, my thought is that the day before they're about to close, after we had brought it up that we weren't going to come to work, me, you, Lexi, and Kaylee... Yeah. Um, <laughs> we should mention as well that we, uh, well, we should go back and say that we discussed with him about shutting down. He said he had no plans of shutting down and what we were going to do. And we, all four of us employees decided, yeah, this shit's fucking stupid. Let's fucking close it. We sent a message. We all kind of, well, you wrote when we all agreed that it was the right thing to do, saying we kind of like weren't going to work and the best way to go is to shut down. So... Now, first of all, that's something he believes that uh, is our fault, both of us. That he had to shut down as well. That he definitely heard about that. Yes. But, what were you going to say on that? After giving a little bit of context to it. What was I going to say on that? Yeah, he probably like talked about it or some bullshit. Oh, yeah, he probably talked about it to his wife that night. When we had sent the message, uh, um, and not any time before that. So, my thought is he didn't even have intention of closing that that week. Just because we had texted him is the only reason that he he hit us with that. I closed. was thinking that already. No, you weren't, bitch. We gave him multiple different options, multiple different ideas of things he could do, and he just did not. Not for them. So, that's what we came to our conclusion to send him that message, which worked out. We did shut, and he just had to reopen himself after. But, yeah. So that was just, that's just one of the things that this dude does that talks, because he just didn't think that this whole thing was an issue at all. As we said in the last video, he thought, oh, we're all young, so it doesn't matter if we get it, just don't come to work if you have a fever. And, uh, yeah, that's obviously incorrect. So, you know, that's... That's the thing that this dude did, for sure. That was toxic. Um... There's a whole list of things, though, that we have that this dude has done that is quite... Obnoxious, so we'll pull that up right now. Uh, so, I don't know if we covered this, but, well, actually, we did do the part that talked about him not taking the virus serious. The other thing is that this dude doesn't take cleaning in general serious. He wrote in his message that I didn't clean the surfaces. Now, we haven't talked about his lack of sanitary desires. So, for him, if a cup falls on the floor when we're making something, like your, uh, the cup we're going to pour a smoothie into, if it falls on the floor, he will pick it up and then serve food in it. He'll try to, like, rinse out the fucking cup. But it's just like, dude, it touched the ground. You can't serve food in it. 
So he'll do that. He also uh, doesn't like to wash his hands before uh, doing anything, before making food. Um, and he also will just, you know, when it comes to, like, the sanitization of things, he kind of just memes it the whole time and says, oh, we don't really have to do it, even though the health inspectors came in and said you have to do it in the four hours. He kind of doesn't really want to do it. As long as you know how to do it when they show up. That's what he cares about. Pretty sure he said that too, didn't he? Which is important. What? Didn't he say that to make sure that we just know how to do it long as we do it when they show up or some shit? Yeah, he did say that. Um, <clears throat> it is important to know how to do it when they yeah. show up because that's when it matters the most. But you should be doing it um, all the time. You should be doing it all the time, yes. We were not doing any sanitary stuff like that, any cleaning things, like, from that standpoint of cleaning out the containers, more than just fucking blasting with some water. We don't even use soap to wash the containers out after making food with them, ever. And we still don't. The only time that they really get that clean is when they get thrown into the sanitation solution in the container, or in the sink. That's it. So, that's a thing. Uh, he would also is never done? I've never seen him do it one time, and he gets fucking, like, hurt if, like... Because I'm like... He asked me to do it, I'm like... I'm like, dude, I'm fucking, like, trying to do other shit. And then, like, you had always done it, so I'm just like, oh, you'll... You know, I knew you were going to get to it in, like, five minutes, and he was, like, adding me to do it. I'm like, bitch, you never even fucking done it one time, dude. Um, but that was the thing that he does. He also carried around a towel on his shoulder for quite a while, which you're not supposed to do, uh, because, well, it's not sanitary to be serving food. Because he's not cleaning tables? Yeah, you're not cleaning tables, you're not, like, using it to pick up a fucking hot pan like fucking people do on, like, fucking shows and shit. You're fucking running a fucking smoothie shop, dude. So you're gonna take that towel. What you're supposed to do, actually, with that towel, what the proper thing is, is have a red sanitization bucket, fill it with the exact same sanitization solution that you do regularly, and drop a towel in there with some water, and then you use that towel to wipe up the counter. But unless you are a bar back or fucking cleaning tables that people are sitting at, you don't do that. Yeah, you don't need that towel on your shoulder, dude. So he comes in every single time until he was told to finally take them out. We would come in, there'd be towels hanging on top of the rack and like dripping down to the sink and shit. And he would get so hurt if I'd use that towel to like wipe shit off the surface, which isn't actually what you're supposed to do either. I will admit I wasn't doing that right, but nobody fucking told me that. Wait, to do what? To not use the fucking towel to clean them. Shit off the surface. We picked it up better than the fucking paper towel did. It was just hanging there, so I'm like, absolutely, I'm gonna use this to fucking wipe off the fucking surface, dude. And he gets so hurt because it's fucking clean towel. And he fucking keeps on his shoulder, he wipe his hands on it after every fucking minute. Would have fucking berries on it. But either way, we had like one point, we had like fucking. 10 fucking <clears throat> towels just hanging out. This dude needed one on his shoulder every fucking time he walked in. So. That's the thing. We're gonna get to, of course, more things I'm just gonna add into our document here. Document. Add the points in, yeah. Oh. Oh, document. Um. So we did discuss the part where he is fake to customers in the last video, or fake to people in general. I don't think we did acknowledge the time though that he said specifically to us that when a customer came up and didn't buy anything, he just said, "I just want their money." I don't think we did acknowledge that. We never had no please. We also didn't acknowledge the fact of when he. Uh, there was one time my parents were there ordering, and we were making stuff for our parents. We were handling their stuff because they ordered a couple smoothies, so we weren't trying to get yeah, more. Race ring. 
we weren't trying to get more, you know, shit coming in. And these people were like looking, this one woman was just standing behind my parents just looking at the board. Not like fully, you know, into buying anything. And they ultimately decided they weren't going to buy anything. And went back to their car. And then Zachary goes and just like yeets out of the, the place and runs after them out to their car. And, like, talks to them. And they're just not, like, interested in this stuff. And then he said, like, he came back and, like, said something to my mom. But I don't remember what it was. But it was, like, some stupid shit about them fucking not ordering something. It's like, dude, you can't do that to customers. Who's going to get mad when you do that? Do what? Who's going to get mad when you fucking... When a customer leaves... You like venting to Olivia about like how rude they were because of the fucking time it took. Oh yeah, he got but all her fucking say, Oh, they didn't buy anything. Like this dude chased the fucking customer out of the fucking like <coughs> parking lot, dude. Like he ran out of the fucking car to talk to them because he didn't buy anything. It's like, dude, it's not how you get fucking people to be a customer, dude. Like, you can't get them to be a customer by just, like, chasing after them. They don't like anything on your fucking board. They don't like anything on your board, dude. Like, does this dude just, like, go into a place and think like, I have to buy something every single time? It is the fact that, like, they were already outside, and he was, like, having a conversation with... Wasn't he, like, talking to your mom or something from inside? No, no, no. He was, like, inside the place. He, like, see all through the window that they left. Dude. Like, he's just absolutely toxic about customers buying shit. Like, it is insane. Like, I get it, you want people to buy something, you want people to your business, but you can't just, like, chase them and fucking, like. I don't know what the fuck he did, but. That was the thing that he did. Oh god, this fucking one corner, dude. This one corner fucking gets me, bro. Also, um, you always complain about wanting the window to be open. Oh yes, that is another thing. Um, which, fun fact, we didn't have a screen for a very long time. So we got a lot of bugs in... The kitchen. The kitchen, um, which is not acceptable. And... Oh, we never bought a fly uh, flower, like you asked for. Yeah. It's gonna get real bad, like... Now. <laughs> yeah, dude. What are you fucking amount shit? But yeah, um... The fact that he just didn't... Like, every single time somebody walked by to go to another place, he, like, insisted on that one of us, like, open the window a little bit. I'm like, dude, you're so fucking desperate, dude. Like, they're not interested. And they just look now, at we me have like, two, We have an open flag and an open sign as well. And now, his whole thing with that is he thought, people aren't going to see the fucking flags. We need to have a sign that's open. Because they can't fucking tell where the hours are because he posted them below a fucking board. And I told them to put them at the top of the board so we can read them. Ah, ah, I'm about to save the dude. I'm about to save his corner. Got a dank save, bro. Oh no, gamer, it says you left. Gamer? I feel he may have lied down. I'm no longer in the party to even What the fuck, dude? I'm the one having the party issue? Hmm. Strange. Strange. Well, since this race doesn't matter, we can go here. Party. 
party you can join. Let's join this. Look at that. We can see the PlayStation. Bro, I'm so excited to see the PlayStation menu in a video, dude. It doesn't go to some stupid ass fucking blank screen. Oh, I'm so happy. Gamer? Gamer? Yes. I'm back, dude. If you want to leave the race as long as it puts me in a playlist, I can see it, yeah. But if you want to do that after, the playlist as long as I'm in one as well, then we okay. Uh, but yeah, roasting this dude again, like... He was just so nasty about that window being open, dude, and getting customers to, like, come in. And, and he was, like, so desperate for customers that he would, like... If one person slightly complained, he would like offer the whole family, um, family a free smoothie. Your shit's like making buzzing sound, which indicates that it's probably not working. What's not working? What are you talking about, dude? Gamer? Damn it, dude. What the frick, dude? Oh my god, dude. My party shit's still working. I just don't hear him anymore. There's probably an issue with that as well. We'll get that figured out. Gamer! Yes. I should fucking stop playing party audio. Yo, real quick, um... Oh, you are still recording. What happened to your thing? What happened to what thing? Your game. Did it just, like, kick you out or...? I don't know, my shit just said not in party dude network or I don't fucking know. I'm fucked up. No, video's still going good because you got a capture card now, baby! Bro, I'm so fucking happy. Looks like I can like. Wait till you get an achievement. <laughs> Bro, I can like go back to the PlayStation menu and it's not gonna fucking matter. It's not gonna like go to a fucking stupid ass screen and join the fucking party. Yo, did you see the Doctor Phil episode yesterday of that woman who like got scammed by like a bunch of dudes? No. One person named the general or some shit. Yo, that shit is the most insane episode of Dr. Phil I've ever seen. She is like... I don't even know. She she is... This lady, like... Um... Real quick, uh, that race obviously will not count against the totals. Not like it really fucking matters at this point. Um, yeah. <laughs> but that will not go against the totals. Um, Alright, so tell your story, then we can get back to these fucking Zach memes. Yeah, so this woman divorced her husband. Okay. Or didn't divorce, divor divorce her husband. She took a break from her husband. And... As you do. Um, just... Tried to get with uh, like dudes from Africa, I guess, or some shit like that. Okay, uh, real quick, and are you in the playlist still? I am. I'm just finishing this race. Okay, if you want to back out, because I'm in the playlist, I'll invite you to it. I'm already in the next race. Okay. Okay, so she wanted to get with dudes from Africa. Okay, is she white? <clears throat> yeah, um, but she she got scammed though. And she's like, her story is really sad. That's the thing. It's like, she's not like crazy. Her story is just really sad. Um, but yeah, she uh, eventually got scammed by this person named the general. 
and there's this thing called like a black money scam. It's where you paint paper black. And there's a compound, a chemical compound mixed with iodine and water um, that like turns money black. And you can wash it off using the solution that is supposedly like a lot of money. That's a scam. The solution is a lot of money um, to change the dollar into or change the paper into the dollar. But this person... Um, did a demonstration at like her place. So he already had bills set up that were like painted black with the, with the iodine and the water. Um, and he showed her, she believed it. She sent the money to him to get more of the solution so that he could give her the rebel black money that he found in Afghanistan. And she ended up paying like, nine thousand five hundred dollars or some shit for like a bunch of white paper yikes that's fucking insane dude you know and it, it like there's like two other stories it's so wild you, you have to watch this shit it's wild dude yeah back to zach being done uh yeah so there was one time that there was this customer that came in that complained I'm saying that they, the their smoothie took so long because i don't know they were fucking soccer mom fucking karen and their kid like played basketball and then had to go play, like, fucking baseball or fucking basketball or football or lacrosse or whatever fucking sport. Got from basketball to play it again? Do yeah. Do, like, a school and a rec program? So, either way, this person complained in their smoothie took so long when we already had, like... They were, like, in line of, like, four of the people, so we already had a bunch of smoothies to make. She complained. Zach brought it up to us. Zach, like... Which is the first complaint we've actually got. Yeah, the first, like... Actual logic. complaint. Yeah. Yeah. So we got said complaint. Zach freaks out because he can't fucking handle negativity and criticism. Because he's got a fucking ego of, I'm the best person, I'm flawless. So, basically, this happened. He brings it up to us. He gets the person's phone number, calls them or texts them or whatever, and tells them that he will give their whole family free smoothies. Just because he got a bad review. This also comes to another scenario where somebody commented online uh, that we didn't have vegan yogurt, which they wanted. And then he wrote some shit back to them telling them to bring their own yogurt because the person that owns another store there told him that she knew this person and don't take their criticism or whatever the fuck it was. When it's just like, dude, just buy vegan yogurt, dude. Like, it's not hard. He doesn't want my vegan yogurt. We found some in Stop and Shop. You pointed it out to me that was like $4 for a decent sized container, especially for the amount that we'd use. Um, so that was a thing. Uh, there was also one person that said that the drink took too long to make. And then I'm like, I can't really do anything about it. It was like a hot chocolate. So I brought it up to his wife because she was there and he was not. Um, and then the way that I responded was just like, I, they're complaining about dumb shit. I don't really care. Uh, which then she told him and he freaked out to me about. And I'm just like, dude. Like, I, they're complaining about meaningless shit. What do you want me to do? <laughs> like... They're complaining about something that's out of our, like, control. We're doing hot chocolate at the speed that we're doing it. Because we take chocolate milk and heat it up. Instead of just having a fucking powder that we add to fucking water. So. You know, we did this in this way. And that's how it has to be made. <laughs> and this dude was just, like, hurt so much that I responded that way. Um, are you in the lobby? I am, yeah. I don't know if I could join you. I did no, I send you an invite. You just did? Oh, I just got it. Okay, I sent you one before. It must have not, it might have not been there. Um, but yeah, so that was the thing that happened. Um, just the whole thing about being fake. We also touched on the, uh, 
telling customers to bring their own yogurt. I think we Which can, is um, not something you can do. Illegal, actually. Yeah, you, you can't take um, things from customers, bring them into the kitchen, and then make something with it. You can do it yourself if you work there. If you bring your own stuff in. I made a Red Bull smoothie. You brought in uh, chocolate almond milk, things like that. But you can't tell a customer to fucking bring their own thing. Yeah, no. And also, that's extremely fucking rude, dude. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So the other thing is that he... I mentioned on the fact that he wants to be loved by everybody, which is true. He wants everybody to love him, think he's, like, the best person ever. Uh, but he doesn't respect anybody else. That's the thing. He has zero respect for other people. But he wants you to respect him and think he's the fucking great dude. Which is just hardcore fuck talk, dude. That's just fucking insanely tough. <laughs> yeah, I've been watching the Family Feud recently. I know it's a weird diversion, but it has something to do with And I would love to see Steve Harvey just fucking rose the hell out of that, dude. Yes! <laughs> On fucking Family Feud, dude. Just like. Not even something subtle. Like. Just roast this dude for one of his stupid ass answers. Like, where is your best? What food do you think of the most? It's like ah, Dexter's smoothie coffee ball. <laughs> Boy, I just imagine you fucking the the meme where Steve Harvey just like stares at the person like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> Damn. Steve Harvey's fucking great too, dude. You want to acknowledge him? Yo, I I didn't know we had like a whole family feud in Africa too. So what? I just started watching that shit. Yeah, it's <laughs> so funny. This dude, like, I didn't know he spoke uh, fucking Ga, which is an African language in Ghana. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, this dude is like out here making fucking <laughs> jokes. Yo, he's. It was one of the funniest family feuds I've seen. Like even funnier than the regular one. I hate the celebrity one. Yeah, celebrities are fucking dumb. No, fucking dumb. ninja. Bro, ninja's fucking. That shit was so funny when he fucking roasted ninja too. He said, he said, so you play video games. <laughs> <For your job. laughs> oh man, I find that funny to laugh at as we're making a YouTube video. Well, I mean, he like he does esports, so it's a different kind of like video games. But <laughs> Fortnite's not a fucking like, esport, dude. Let's just fucking get that out there. Esports, what? He—that's what he broadcasts himself at. He said he does esports. Yeah, it's like, dude, you fucking play Fortnite, dude. Nobody <sighs> fucking plays it as an esport, dude. Dude. What? But, um, yeah. It's fucking insane, dude. Um, shit. Fuck. Fuck. This track is getting me, dude. After this race bill episode, we will back to uh, regular controllers for episodes. We can point it out. But it has been uh, an interesting experience, the race of the wheel in GTA. But if you do want to see more content with the wheel on the channel, of course you can uh, see that in other gaming videos, probably more in F1, things like that, once I get more used to racing with it. Yeah. Oh, there's a practice on F1 2019. Hopefully, we're ready for when uh, F1 2020 launches in July. Uh, but yeah, back to back to this dude. Zach's not gonna get away with this stuff that needs to be. Uh, so I don't understand that this dude does. I mean, we can bring up the whole situation with the fucking 
30 cent vibing cup. I know we touched on it, we don't have to go into detail, I think we did in the video a while ago. Um, but, that was one of his biggest fucking meltdown moments. So, basically what happened was, the Mizzle here is, uh, he does occasionally forget things, kind of anything he's always done. It's kind of uh, something about him. That's just how he is. And, that's 100% fine. We have stories from <laughs> when we were younger, he'd stay over my house multiple times, and he'd always seem to forget something here. Just how he is. Doesn't really matter. Some people just forget stuff. So this dude forgot his smoothie cup, which Zachary likes to point out that he was very kind of giving everybody one. Um, so we were each given a smoothie cup. And Lamizzle here forgot his one day. And instead of just, you know, not using a free smoothie or, the, you know, things like that, because we always get a free smoothie every day as work, he decided to use one of the cups that we have, the 24-ounce cups. Figured, you know, he's not going to use the big one. So he uses it, drinks the smoothie, and throws it in the garbage. That tree comes in, keeps the garbage can, and I don't know why he just looks in the garbage can, but he does, and notices the used cup. I was like fucking nine in the morning. We're not really trying to deal with this dude's fucking bullshit. And he just has like a fucking like massive fucking flip out. <laughs> like he just complains saying that he was already informed once about fucking using the cups and all that shit. And he just like makes it like a fucking crisis because like the cups cost money and all this bullshit, which the price of the cup comes out to about 30 cents. <laughs> you want to tell more on the story, gamer? Of which I had, uh, I had gave him, you know, because he had a dummy. And then I told him to deposit the bank. And... Or no, did he say that? Was... He said, oh, I'll bring it to the bank right now, which was on a Sunday. Yeah. Um, I really but... wish I fucking remembered it Sunday that day. Oh my god, I would have fucking got fired right there for that. <laughs> it would have been worth it, dude. Oh my god, yeah, it would have been. Tone this dude's fucking Sunday tool. He ain't to shit. Actually, I'll take that 30 cents back, in fact. This dude had such a problem with that shit, and he's like, oh. Do we have anything else we got to discuss? And I'm like, I'm not involved in this. I just think that this is stupid. But, like... I think I told him, like, I don't really know why this is such a big deal, but okay. Yeah. He's trying to bring me into it. I'm like, nah, I'm not involved in this. But I just think that the way that this is happening, we're having issues with all the bullshit, dude. <laughs> like, oh, dude, does anybody else have issues? Oh, we could talk about it. Sure. If we talk about issues with this dude, he just, like, blows it off. And he's like, well, listen to it from my perspective. He doesn't listen to it from anybody else's perspective, though. Um, yeah, so that's another thing that this dude does. Um, so that was, that was probably one of the biggest issues that we had with this dude. Um, we also have situations where he tells customers are things that we're doing personally, which you're not really allowed to do. And we definitely could have got him in trouble for that had we mentioned it at the moment. Yes. Because you definitely can't be telling customers personal business about what your employees are doing. If you want to bring it up yourself, you can, but it's not something that, as a boss, you should be telling customers what your employees are doing, including... I know he, for a fact, told people that I had my... Uh, toes fucking fixed or whatever the fuck. Oh, yeah. I don't know if he told about your things, but I know he for sure told 
customers about that. And I'm just like, dude, why are you fucking telling people that? They don't need to know. Um, so that was definitely a yikes moment on his part. Oh, this here is a race you do the hot ring with the gamer, just to throw it out there. But that's the thing. Um, yeah, we also have, um, again, making simple things into big issues. The biggest one, of course, is the usage of the cup. Uh, but other things like a, um, a small, smaller thing, but he still decided to bring it up, uh, was the fact that there were no beans um, for coffee. So he went to make decaf coffee, and he, uh, he decides to text us and say, there weren't any beans for making decaf coffee like it was our fault even though we weren't even the ones that worked the day before it was still our fault for not restocking decaf beans uh, into the place because there was like five in a fucking bag now it's not hard to eat decaf beans you have to walk out of a door and then go grab another bag but still he made that into a big thing when he texted us that and we're just like dude shut the fuck up well no he was mad because we didn't say that we were close to the end of the bag when we were not close to the end of the bag when we had left that day. Yeah, on Sunday, that day, we were not close to the end of the bag. It was like a Tuesday that he sent out a message. So, somebody must have made decaf on Monday and not done anything about it. And it's just like, dude, you don't have to, like, bring that up, dude. Like, it's 100% fine, dude. Like, yeah, I get it if it's like... He it like he didn't have decaf beans right there available at his shop. <laughs> yeah. Or, like, there's a fucking large majority of people who want decaf fucking coffee because people have bought that before in a bag. Yes! I won with the wheel! I won with the wheel! You gonna use the wheel from now on, Jimmy? <laughs> no! I finally won this track, dude. I think I won it last time, though. I'm very happy, dude. I'm so... I'm back, dude. I'm back. I mean, I had four DNFs, but... I'm back, dude. I'm so happy, dude. Ah! I've never been happy about a win before like that. Um. But yeah, he made a big deal about fucking decaf coffee beans. Um. Another thing is, there was a item which absolutely tasted terrible. It was chocolate, raspberries, and avocado. Um, <laughs> so, do with that information what you want. Um, but, but this smoothie is disgusting. And he wrote in a message, or he put it on a Facebook post saying we have a new smoothie. Didn't inform any of us, so we're all under the impression that this smoothie is going to be on the menu now when we didn't have any discussion about it. Which then he writes, it's a secret menu item and gets all hard at us because we decide to ask him a question about what it was and he made that into a fucking like big deal and said fucking texting is not a good way to communicate and all this shit you'd have a fucking discussion with us just specifically us two with him and it was just like a whole fucking thing because of these stupid ass fucking menu items and the other thing was that at the same time we were hiring Lexi because Lamizzle was not going to be available for a couple of weeks on Friday. He was still going to be there Saturday and Sunday, but on one day a week he was not going to be available to work. Uh, so he decides to that we need to hire somebody immediately instead of just giving me more hours, which I ended up getting anyways, which we'll get into that, and then him just handling it. We had to hire somebody immediately, and I'm just like, so can you at least, like, listen to my opinion on, um, like, if I think that this person is somebody I can work with? And he's like, I fucking, I don't know you good enough or well enough. We only worked together, like, ten times, and it's just like, you need more than ten times to tell if you work well with somebody? What's this track? Who does oh. And it's just like, dude, like, you gotta fuck it up. So 
but that shit was just fucking obnoxious. Um, it's just like, I'm not saying you have to like, hire the person or not hire them or whatever, but it's just like, at least like, listen to my fucking like, thoughts at work with them. Turned out that Lexi's like, is dank to work with them, it's work with her. But it was just like, dude, like, can you at least like, listen to what I'm gonna say about, you know, if there's someone I can work with or not? And he like, had a fucking freak out about that too, and it was a whole fuck thing, and I'm just like, alright dude, like... Yo, honestly, I think, like, William was toxic, but honestly, I think that, like, Zach just didn't like him, period, so he got rid of him himself. That's what I think Zach does, if he just doesn't like somebody, he just, like, if he can't work with them, I figure it out, like, nothing that I really care that he fired me, but, like, we could have definitely, like, discussed some shit. Instead of just him being like, Ugh, this is what you're fucking wrong. Like, if you actually have an issue with what I'm doing, like, let me know. Like, he mentioned to me one time total that he had an issue with something I was doing. And that was when he's like, uh, you're like, I don't know, whatever he fucking said about the way that I say shit. Sarcastic or some bullshit. That was the only thing that he ever brought up to me that he had an issue with. He said that I was, like, being too sarcastic about shit sometimes. And I'm like, alright, that's an issue. You let me know. I can know to, um, that we're not cool like that. And that's not how we're gonna do shit around here. And that's fine. If you have that problem, bring it up to me. But he never brought up any other issues that he had with me. So, you know, until he was a little bitch and sent me an email. Um,. So that was a thing, but, you know, there are two more major, uh, major things we listed that we wanted to talk about here, uh, in this video. And one of them is the fact that once you did come back from the Fridays being away, uh, he was really against giving you your hours back that you had. Yes. Which, that was a whole fucking scenario as well. Which we should get to also by the fact that when he had to figure out, you know, if you were working or not, or when you weren't working, who was going to do that stuff, I had to ask him if I was going to take your hours. He didn't just say, okay, I need you to take, you know, Lendog's hours. Like, he didn't mention any of that, so I just had to ask him, because my initial hours were like some fucking bullshit. So I had to ask him, like, are you having me go in at fucking six fucking whatever in the morning, or what? <laughs> like, I had to ask him, he didn't just fucking communicate it. That was a big issue that he had with communication, he doesn't communicate shit with anybody. As we discussed in the previous video about him, like, reopening, he's not discussing with any of the remaining employees, if they are going to be there. Or they not be there, but like, when he wants them back. Because if he wanted to get rid of him here, he would have, with he got rid of me in the second event. So, that's the thing, but he didn't give you back your hours, he was just like, hardcore against letting you get back your Friday hours. Like, you said, I'm gonna be out for three to four weeks, on Friday. And that was it, and he was just like so against letting you get the hours back that we had to like agree to fucking work another fucking hour on Saturday to let this fucking shit go through, you know? Yeah. Because that was the thing, he wanted to do more hours on Saturday because he does, is 9 to 3. And he decided that he wanted like 9 to 4 on Saturday, which is completely useless because nobody came after fucking 3 anyways. So we had to like, Agree to some fucking whack hours, fucking like six fucking chips to like two. And then. So we lost two hours there, gained an hour on Saturday. That way you get your hours back. And I'm just like, okay, dude. But it was just like such a process to get you your hours back. And he didn't give Lexi any hours. Let's talk about that stuff. Like. He absolutely yeeted her. By. 
he hired her, and I don't think that there was a fucking week that she had more than 10 hours working there. He just gave her, like, some stupid-ass fucking hours, like, three fucking hours. He had her come in, like, one day we were there from, like, two to five. It's like, what is that, dude? Two to five, bro? That's all the hours she can get on a Friday? And then this dude's got Kaylee out here working fucking 27 hours, bro. You fucking leave Lex in her hours, give her fucking seven more, give Kaylee seven less, there you go. 20, 20, 20, and then 17, like, dude, it's not that hard. I sure, that's more even, I know that it wouldn't be, like, entirely even for Lexi, but 17 is better than fucking 10. Mm -hmm. So that was the thing that he did, but... By far, the most obnoxious thing that Zach did, as much as toxic as all this shit is, is the way that he uh, treats his wife. Yeah. That is by uh, far the most toxic thing. All this shit's obnoxious. But the way that he treats his wife is on another fucking level, dude, of just how, like toxic he is towards her. Uh, do you want to give the first example of this one? I've been discussing this shit for a minute. Yeah. Um, well, it's not like... It, see, Zach's, Zach's situation is very interesting. He's not... Or at least we don't know if he hits his wife. I'm not going to say that he does, because he... I don't know that for a fact. So We're not going to make that accusation here. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to slander his name like that. You know he is a fuck boy. <laughs> but... He is just very, like, the, he talks bad to his wife. It's kind of the same situation how, like, he views work. He's the boss of, like, everything. He tries to, like, be in control of everything. Um, Olivia I, is his wife's name. I remember um, one of the first times that, you know, everybody had really gotten a chance to meet her. Um was during the meeting that we had and uh, she was working, it was during Valentine's Day, she was working on art and crafts project, uh, making a bunch of hearts on strings so that we could decorate the place up. Which looked cool, it went by our opening window. It was nice to have for that week. Yeah. Um, but Zach, uh, Snakery, had said it's not arts and crafts hour when his own wife was working on a project to make his business more popular on a certain day or to bring more happiness and joy and energy to the workplace on that specific day he told her it's not arts and crafts hour in front of everybody that was at the meeting at the time which was his three employees and then to her it's just like dude like that's not the fucking right thing to say like, I'm sure she already knows the shit, like, you fucking run the business together, dude. I don't know if she's actually considered part owner of it, but, like... <sighs> like, dude... <sighs> I'd be surprised if she was. Be surprised? Yeah, probably. But, like, that's the thing, dude, like... Um, he has his wife pay for... Oh, yeah, she doesn't whatever. get a free fucking smoothie or a free coffee. She has to pay for it. She pays for whatever she buys out of her own money. Ah. Uh, also, um, she had, unfortunately, gotten... Uh, lost her job because uh, she thought she was doing the right thing. She did do the right thing, but the company policy um, was she not. She went against the company rule. At, yeah, yeah. at businesses, they rather have the person that's stealing something steal it instead of you fighting it back. As an employee, and then if something happens to that person there, they can sue the company. You can, you know, we could debate if that's right or wrong, but. Theoretically, and technically by the rules, she did break 
the rule of the company. As unfortunate as it is for her, she did break the company rule. Which they think that Zach thinks they can have a fucking lawsuit for that. I'm like, dude, think you're gonna fucking win that shit? Um, so. So that happens. If he's having a lawsuit against the company, yeah, you're not winning that. You're but. not winning that for that thing. That he <laughs> went against their rule, dude. <laughs> If they fired her on some fucking bullshit fucking things, then yeah, like, she did technically break a company rule. Which, if you do that, you do get fired for that precisely. That's how it works. If you break that rule specifically, you get fired. Which is very unfortunate because, um, for the length that she was working there, I'm not gonna, like, specifically talk on that specifically because again it's not my thing to talk about but um, it was a, a situation that did happen so you know it, it does pertain to what we're talking about but um you know it, I it sucks because everybody reacts to situations differently I don't know what happened if she was held at gunpoint I don't think she was held at gunpoint or anything like that but um Everybody reacts differently to situations, and her natural reaction was to, you know, help the business, protect the business by them not getting away with valuable merchandise and, um, you know, I, again, it's a rule, but it's unfortunate. Um, but, again, as I was saying, it does pertain to the fact that. Uh, she pulls her own money out of her own wallet and pays for whatever at the vault. Now, we can also acknowledge that Zach, when he gets his stuff, uses company money to buy his own stuff, which is just stupid. It's like, why are you going to put $100 from company money on a gift card to get a smoothie when you can just, like... Swipe your gift card? <laughs> I mean, swipe your credit card? Yeah, either swipe your business card or just put it as, like... An expense in the business because either way it's going to do the same exact thing it's going to be you getting a free smoothie because it's not from your own money it's from the company's money which are theoretically second or they are separate entities it's in business and that tree as a person are separate entities so if you're using company money which is just going to go back to the company anyways you're stupid because you're paying fucking fees for that to go through the process of the credit card machine, dude. When you just do your free one like everybody else does, all the employees, and just put it in the system as zero dollars, which is smarter than do. But either way, the way that he uh, treats her and says things to her is very unfortunate, uh, including the way that he does it in front of customers. They have uh, acknowledged it, my parents, or my mom was there once. He said something to his wife in a certain way. My mom brings it up quite frequently. So we talk about Zach. So if he does that shit, it definitely stands out if a customer sees it. Yes. The way that he says things to her in this fucking like a terrible fucking way, dude. So if anything, I mean, he... that's just that's just like not exactly. when we're when we were there. From what we heard, mm -hmm. you know, he might be like he's with her there every day. So there's so, definitely other questions we've seen. Yeah. I so, definitely don't doubt that he said some shit and someone's heard something before. Now, we're not making accusations that he's, like, always like this to her. It could just be. But that's how it is in the work environment. But from things... Situations like that, I highly doubt that that's just a... work environment thing. Yeah, and, and like I had said previously, you know, it's difficult with Zach's situation because he's not like, or from we, what we don't know, he's not physical with Olivia, so it's not like he's, like, really, I mean, it's going over the line to be rude to a woman in general, but, um, you know, it's it's just the fact that he doesn't, like, do anything physical and, and what he says is rude but not like abusive 
yeah. I guess. So we're not making those it, accusations at all. It's a different thing, yeah. So, as much as we think the dude is obnoxious and toxic, that's not something we would make an accusation about him. Yes. Because there's different... You can say that you don't like the dude or whatever, but to then just say that that's how he is and you don't know is not the correct thing. There's other things that he does that we find toxic that we can say that we find, okay, you can say that he's not fucking sanitary with how he's fucking does shit. That's fine. That's something we know for sure. We've seen it. But we're not going to just make an accusation about him. That's something we don't know. Um, I just want to go on that note. The last thing uh, others said about him, he is a uh, major simp. We haven't touched on his simp this month. Simp reason other names we go by for him. Um, this dude's definitely into uh, single moms. He definitely would go out there and chats up the ladies and get their phone numbers. Um, so, you know. I'm not making any other accusations there as well. What? So I'll let you go off on this one. I mean, we're not making any accusations there, but it's just he's a little bit... Uh, he says we're not making any accusations with simping. Yes, we fucking are, dude. You know he... Oh, he's got a whole simp pose, dude. This fucking dude simps all the time. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's kind of wild with that one. I don't know if he's just doing it to get the get the dollars, but that shit is kind of freaking wild, dude. So uh, that is our uh, that's our vault stories. I hope you guys uh, liked them. Actually, let us know what you think of them. Um, there's one more thing we have to touch on, and that is the future of the vault. Oh well, I was gonna say yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed the vault stories because we do have to talk about what's gonna happen next year, though. So, unfortunately for Zadri, Snakery, um, he had he had fired one of his uh, better and trained employees uh, for two months. Now when we say fired, that's just the term that we're using. Yes, yes, not brought I back. Not, I was not actually fired, just for technical reasons. Um, I was not actually fired, but we'll use the term because why the fuck not? Uh, when Zach didn't decide to bring you back. He did not know that Lexi was not really that interested in coming back with the amount of hours that she was given by Zach. Yep. Um, and I mean, it is totally understandable when you apply for a job and you get told you you're ask. Yeah, you get told you're working 20 hours and then you ask for more hours when you're not getting the 20 hours and everybody else in the company has 20 plus hours and there's one person in the company who has more than 20 plus hours um, then you know I frustration starts to set in and you know you don't really want to work for that place anymore if, if that's how they're treating you um, so with her not being interested really in coming back to the vault all that much, um, I mean, Zach, I'm sure, is going to try and give her more hours now to try and incentivize that, but. Once you're already pressured, you job. Like <clears throat> yeah, it's difficult to come back from that, especially since he still doesn't have the good communication. Um, so that's a thing. He also doesn't know that you have the desire to not lose their racing as well. That's correct. He, no, I did tell him um, that I was moving relatively soon in September to Massachusetts. Uh, things have bounced around a lot. So, I don't think that's happening anymore. So, I wa he was under the impression that I would be leaving eventually. Um, However, that might be a lot sooner than expected, just because of 
certain actions he's taken. There's other, there's reasons that definitely lead to that. Um, mentally having each other there, working together is definitely beneficial uh, for both of us. So for you, if I'm not there, you just kind of can do the exact spell, uh, which is definitely toxic. <laughs> um, and also once you had moved, your way of getting to work was I was going to pick you up, so now you don't have a transportation to uh, work either. That is correct. So, that's another scenario that uh, he did not plan out, so. There were some wild things happening there, and, you know, he's he wasted a lot of money on things before this whole virus started, which something probably won't happen this season, or this year, so. Financially, there's a bit of a yikes there, considering he bought a trailer to go to events this summer, which a lot of them are already canceled, uh, or reduced crowds if they happen. And um, he also sponsored Little League yeah. Baseball, which there's a good chance that probably, I'd imagine, would get canceled as well. And bought the door. Oh, yeah. So, there's a bunch of things on that. Um, let me once again go the dub. Uh, in this episode, shout out to the name, two dubs, two dubs. And, um, yeah, so very wild, uh, very wild times here. Uh, so that's gonna be that. Anything else you gotta say? Uh, Zach is a dummy. <laughs> There's a lot to say about that. Um, so thank you all for watching. This, of course, has been a wild episode with the uh, the racing wheel. Um, and yeah, we'll uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.